Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. How everybody doing today? I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Are we not in the house of the Lord? Or you ought to act like it. The psalmist said, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord. So what are you going to shout? You're going to shout about his goodness. You're going to shout about his glory. You're going to shout. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all yeah. ready, huh? Y'all yeah. sure y'all ready? Yeah. Well, let's rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, y'all look good today, too. Yeah. yeah. Look good today. We're going to have Deacon Sin come and do our opening prayer. Amen. And we're going to move from there. Good morning. You can all bow your head. We're going to go to the throne of grace. Oh, gracious Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, with so much love in our hearts for you. God, you've brought us over the bridge and into this brand new year, and we're so thankful for it, Father God. To be able to be in your house. To be able to just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you tell us, Father God, if, if we just seek ye first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness, Lord, all those other things you will give to us, Father God. And so we just want to concentrate this morning on you this morning, Lord. Forget about ourselves, Father God. And just think about, Father God, what can we do to please you on this morning, Father? We pray, God, that you encamp your angels around this building the east, the west, the north, and the south, Father God, that the powers of the enemy and the devil cannot penetrate this holy place. I pray, God, for all those that are assembled right now, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you go see by them, Father. That, God, you give them their needs, Father God. Father God, that you continue to provide, God, as only you can, God. God, you are Jehovah Jireh, Father God. You are Jehovah D.C., Father. Father God, you are the great I am, Heavenly Father. God, for that we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to get on our knees and pray to you, Father. Thank you for a Bible to read, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, that provides comforts for us. Lord, we have some people, God, that are good to read, Father God. Some in hospitals and hospices. Father God, those on corners, Father God, with no one to turn to. God, we ask Heavenly Father that you send God your Holy Spirit and your anointing to those corners as well, Father. And God, we ask God that you bless the speaker of the hour. That God, as your word is brought forth, may it pierce the bone and the marrow that someone may be saved. We love you, we thank you, and we honor you. And we say we glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We will now have our devotions by the deacons and deaconesses. Let's give them a round of applause as they come. You know we just got to be still yes. and when we be still God will fight our battles for us yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. so that's what we're going to say in this morning on this first Sunday we're going to say be still God will fight our battles yes. amen y'all help us out be still God will fight your battles be
Everyone, please stand as we read the word for today. We'll be coming from the book of Psalm, chapter 40. Book of Psalm, chapter 40. Does everyone have it? We're going to begin at the first verse. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Yes. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. Yes. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Yes. Blessed is the man who maketh the Lord his trust, and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be encountered into your order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than unnumbered. Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the hook. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. May God bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our blessed Heavenly Father, King of Father, yes. the great I Am. Yes. Lord, we come before you this morning on bended knee with humble hearts, thanking you for another day, thanking you even for another year. Lord, you have blessed us. You have kept us. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We've seen wars and rumors of wars. We see earthquakes and destruction. We see man's depravity towards his brother man. We've seen all kinds of ill and evil in this world. But Lord, we rest assured in the knowledge that you are still in control. Now we ask that you keep us, that you abide with us for just a little while, yes, God. that you touch us, that we may know that we have been loved by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. We're not have our doctors. Please remain standing. Please remain standing.
Amen. Now, unfasten your seatbelts because they're not going to do you any good. As the Mount Zion praise team comes and take us over off in the air. Let's give them a round of applause as they bless our soul today. Oh, come on and bless the Lord in this house, Mount Zion. Oh, come on and bless the Lord in this house, Mount Zion. It's the first service of 2024. You ought to be up on your feet giving God some praise that you made it. That you made it one more year. That the Lord kept you one more year. You ought to give God some praise. If you don't want the Lord to pass you by, give him a praise. I said, if you don't want the Lord to pass you by, give him a praise. Y'all ready to go higher? Well, come on and help us do this song this morning. Oh, come on and put those hands together. The song says, do not pass me by. Come on, say, pass. Come on and say he. Tenor, say wow. Come on all together now, say do not. There you go, y'all sound good this morning. They do.
Sister Jacqueline, amen. If you'd like to um, register your children for this event, that's at the Memorial Middle School. I've been there. It's very educational and informative, and they have a lot of positive things for our youth. If you'd like your youth to be a part, Sister Jackie, can you please raise your hand? See her at the service, amen. She can get you all the other information and to get you your children registered. Come out. It will empower your children, amen. Upcoming event, um, January the 28th, the praise team is needed, and Jocelyn will be dancing that Sunday. It's um, um, Pastor Appreciation for Pastor Murphy and his wife. Amen. That is at 4 p.m. Also, April the 7th at 4 p.m., we will be at Pastor Monroe Church. The praise team is doing a selection, and Jocelyn will be dancing. Amen. Amen. Do we have any visitors today? If so, please stand. We want to welcome you to Mount Zion. Come on, Mount Zion. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. It's the first Sunday of the year. We got to do it right, y'all. I said we got to do it right, y'all. So listen, listen. On behalf of Mount Zion, now we're not Christian church. We just want to say, it's good. The song says it's good to see you. Come on. It says, welcome to the service of the Lord. And it says, welcome to Mount Zion. Now come on Zion, lift your voice and say, it's good to see. Touch your neighbor, say, I've been doing. Come on, say, welcome to the service of the Lord. And touch him and say, welcome to Mount Zion. It's the third time we got to 
Rock with it. There you go. Come on, loosen up in here. Say, welcome to the service of the Lord. And listen, walk with the mouth high. Now, Tyree, come on and do that big one on now. There you go, boy. Come on, say, walk with the mouth high. Say, walk into the service of the Lord. Put your hands for the Lord this morning. We'd like to identify some people who thought in that robbery to not only continue their walk with Christ, but be a part of this great house. Amen? Amen. So we have some certificates of completion for those who completed our new members class. Amen? Because you need to know what you're joining. Amen? Amen. Amen. Talk back if you can. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we would like to, and I'm not sure who's quite here yet, um, Miss Nicole Hobson. Oh. Hey, man, you're holding the baby. Let me hand it to you. Amen. Look at that boy looking sharp today. You see him, man? Don't kill your beacon over there. Um, I hope I'm saying the name correct. Kakima Hunter. Come on, Mr. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being a part of this great house. Amen. 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 Brother Christian White. and they wait a while to see what God would have them to do. This brother sweats me every week about what more can he do. So we are proud to announce the new men of Abraham president is Brother Christian White. Yeah. New men of Abraham. Amen. Love you, man. So men, we're looking to meet uh, for now, once a quarter, amen? So that we have to keep to rescheduling and rescheduling every month. We understand. So I give you three months to get your lie right. Or <laughs> <laughs> you can't meet up. Hey, amen. Hey, Talk about it, sir. <laughs> Four times a year, we should be able to come together. Amen. Hey, amen. Now, our Monday night, our men's Monday night is powerful. We have brothers from all over the world who come from different churches, different ministries who love God. And it's powerful and it's amazing. I'm glad that God instilled it in our church to be promoted. But I still like the physical fellowship of men. They can say whatever they need to say and stay in the room. So ladies, if you're man in on Monday night, please don't bother. Don't come in there with all that stuff now you want him to do. Let me help get him to that place that he'll fix his face when you say something to him. Amen! Amen. Talk back if you can. 
Sister Teresa Jones. Amen. Yeah. And Joey. Amen. She spearheads our mental health ministry, Zion Project. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. She a hate her. She hates she trying to hate on the pastor. But first day, why you come up here? You tired today? Yeah, you know, you know, I'm the cousin pastor. We need to represent for the women. You know what I'm talking about? You don't do right by me in no kind of way. Amen. Come on, darling. Oh, her knee bothered her. Y'all pray for her. She got a knee problem. Mother Dorothy Smith. So I am proud to announce that Mother Dorothy Smith will be becoming one of our new mothers. Yeah. Yeah. She's been we'll be starting that this year. And we're glad to have you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Mother Rachel Allen. to have you. Amen. <laughs> now, Mother Ellen works on our Seniors Helping Through Christ ministry. We're glad to have her. She also does meals on wheels throughout the week as well. So, if she can do it at her age, young people, we're going to give you a few more Sundays to get your life right. <laughs> Come on, get to work. Amen? <laughs> That's the awesome Yes, he is. First Sergeant George McZeal. Come on. Now, Brother McZeal is not only another helper within the Seniors Helping Through Christ, but he's also a chaplain at the local post there in, in Orlando. And his hands is anything he can get busy, he's the guy. Amen. Deacon Robert Smith, a.k.a. Biscuits. Let me tell you something. You know one of the biggest qualities you got to have to be a deacon? Is that everybody ought to love him. This man, it's hard not to love him. Amen. Amen. And we thank Mother Smith for letting her share her with him. But you my guy. I love you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we ain't got one of those churches where the deacons and the pastors be fighting in church. We ain't doing that. Amen. We don't love them. Yeah. Right. Sister Gwendolyn Wyatt Bright. Sister Gwen, not only is she one of our ushers, but she's also, she helps in our cleaning ministry, our facility. She makes sure it's nice. And if she can say anything, please pick up what you drop. Amen. All right, she says she's here to help. She ain't your mama and your mate. Sister Ladrina Grayson. with our ushers, but she's also our new members coordinator. Amen? Right. Amen. Right. So to be honest, we had how many last year joined my time? About 60 people. <coughs> but I don't remember 60 people going through new members class. Right. Listen, I, I, I need you to know what you're joining. Yeah. So, now, so when I upset you, and I will, because my goal is to get the best out of you, yeah. you may be saying, well, he did tell me in those classes right. what was coming. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. We all going to do great in God. So please, if you've not signed up, uh, she gave me a great idea. We were doing it three Sunday mornings straight. 
So we're now going to look at doing one one Saturday morning for three hours, and we'll be done. Right. Amen? Amen. Every quarter. Amen. We'll give you three months. Amen. Thank you, sister. See, that's why I need leaders who come up with greater ideas. We don't want to know anything, guys. Our prayer is God will send us people that know more than us, but still willing to submit and serve with us. Amen? Amen. 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 Sister Gracie Dow. <laughs> Sister Gracie also, she is in our ushers ministry, but she also is a cleaning crew. I got to give them props. When I took the new job as the chief over at the police department, and my office was not uh, to my liking, I only had to make a call. Sister Gracie and Sister Gwen came over and cleaned my whole office for me. All right. Amen. I want to pay him, but they said, Pastor, don't disrespect me like that. Amen? Amen. Um, not sure. March Barnes? We know who you is. Amen. Brother Barnes is a great guy. Now, if you need a pool, I don't ever tell everybody, but if you need a pool, this man does pools. All right. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about this. She's focusing, yes, but she. <sighs> Latoya Manning. All right. She's here? All right. So we'll make sure we reach out to her. If you have completed our class and not received the certificate, please see Sister Jordan uh, so we can get you one. Amen? Amen. So we can acknowledge your presence and the power of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you. Amen. You know, we had a men's breakfast yesterday over at Nick's. Real good food. I just happened to wake up a little late, so I jumped up, put on my work pants, Two different shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, different colors. Some old raggedy tennis shoes I cut in. We got ready to leave the restaurant, and these guys ripped. D, I needed you yesterday. They cracked on me like, what? I mean, I'm going to work, but they really put it on me. So the next time I go, I'm going to wear a suit. And some shoes. So they can't do me like that no more, because they was rough. The brother right there ain't gonna call no name. The brother over there sitting by his fiance. These two guys back here. D, I needed you yesterday, man. Hey, okay, but we enjoyed ourselves. Oh, I'm so the next time we have one brother, and I need y'all back up. But these new, these other guys, they just don't play fair. And I'm gonna wear my same outfit because I'll be going to work right after we get through eating. Yes, I do. We're gonna now have Mother Mary come up. She got something to say. And then we're going to move forward. Thank you. I'm not going to keep you long. I'm Marilyn Harrison. I'm the secretary of the seniors ministry. And I just have two announcements. The first one is tomorrow uh, we have the seniors were given free tickets and we have some left over for the color purple. Unfortunately, it is a matinee. The movie starts about 1, 1 o'clock or 1.30. But if there's someone that's not working and would like to come, uh, just meet us here at the church at 11 o'clock and we'll give you the free tickets. Okay? And the seniors are on the go this, this early this year. We ran a lot last year and we're going to keep running. Right? <laughs> What we're going to do is we would like to in, uh, include all the members and we would like to do a cookbook. And the cookbook is coming from you all, everybody. Anybody that cooks, men, children, any recipe that you may have from your grandmother, your great-grandmother, just as long as Pat gives her uh, dirty rice, I'm good. 
I bought a cookbook just for dirty rice. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't cook, so you don't have to worry about anything in there for me. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to start collecting the, res the recipes. We can start today, as soon as today. We want to have the cookbook out by Mother's Day. Woo! So the, de the deadline, and I'm, in, I'm into deadlines. I'm sorry, folks. I'm into dates, times, and all of the above. <laughs> The deadline will be May the 1st, and the cost of the cookbook will be $20. Amen. And May the 1st is a Wednesday. That'll give us time to collect all the recipes, get it printed, and put in a nice book. Now, if you, if you want to submit a recipe, you can submit it to any of the seniors. Raise your hand, seniors. Okay? Just give the recipe to them. And, and they'll give it to me, and we'll get it all together. Okay? Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Hanson. We are a place of resources and information, are we not? Yes. So we want to acknowledge, do we have any birthdays in January? Hey, Amen. 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 So let's see, Mother turning 21 today. We can't get up for Mother Rachel at 27. Yes, man. 47. Brother Wells, how old are you? 42. Right. Well, who that over there? Is that Jaquan? Oh, it's Jerry's birthday. Oh, come on, Quan. Come on. See, if you're married, you got to acknowledge your spot. Woo, look at him. Look at Deacon I've done it. Wow. What is that, ostrich? Come on, let's go, brother. Boom. No, but for you. What for you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my boom boom. Happy birthday to you. This is anymore. Love you, guys. Don't get your kids. Don't, don't, don't get your kids. Our nickname is home, okay? Uh, Quan, we need you in the next men's meeting. We missed on you yesterday. Who else we got? Cam Man? Come on, Cam Man. Now, Cam is our audio leader. Amen. I just want to say I'm proud of you. The man you are becoming, the maturity level is increasing, and you're going to continue to do great things. The call is on your life, so the devil's going to be busy. Amen. But we love you. Happy birthday. Amen. 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 Oh, Brother Robert. Yes. Your birthday is what day? Oh, Friday! Well, now we got happy birthday, brother Robert. Amen. Or say, who else we got? Who else birthday? Yes, sir. Tyree Wood, come here, boy. Now. This is special because my baby boy turns 18. On the 12th. Right. So the state of Florida said, I ain't got to find nothing else. I ain't got to do nothing else for him. He on his own. I am proud to now. He's already got at least one football offer.
Nobody can believe him. It's cold up there, though. What? The coach just called him again last night to remind him that he wants him to come up for a uh, campus visit in the spring. But all I can say is, my man, uh, every day I pray that the Lord will keep giving you insight, uh, discernment, to choose the people you want in your circle close. Uh, because you guys, y'all go through things I didn't go through. <laughs> With that being said, you have to make a lot of decisions on your own. I move from correcting you to directing you. And I'm always going to direct you back to God. And I pray that you will continue to use that to be a blessing to the people of God. Amen? Come on, Lord, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So as you turn 18, you are now in the ranks with Shamar and Tayan and Tiana, and we are now your adult advisor. So that means I don't have to give you gas money no more. I don't have to give you money to eat no more. And he has a job, so he got a job. So. Um, we'll talk about the New England thing because you already know how I feel about that. But I do, I, I do pray that God continue to grow you the way he wants you to be. I pray that God gives you your heart desires. And I'm, just, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So happy birthday. Love you. I wish you the best. Have fun being an adult. It's not fun, but you're happy being an adult. <laughs> it's not with the hype. It's not with the hype. But all right, love you. Have fun. <laughs> One of his best, if not his best friend, come and say. Now these boys kind of grew up together. We've been knowing the alls. We kind of we were we were junior ministers together, me and Pastor All. So we basically our kids and our wives, we all grew up together as one family. younger, you know, I always prayed I would have somebody I could mentor that would look up to me. God gave me Tyree. He did a lot of bad things and a lot of good things, you know. I got in trouble. got in trouble, but you know, at the end of the day, we made it. A couple accidents, we made it, but you know. Happy birthday. I love you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. When, when he said accidents, no, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> These two totaled Tyon's truck. I mean, totaled. The wheel was off. The whole car was It was nothing but the grace of God. That they was, yeah, Reverend was in a hospital at the time. They walked away from a car that looked like it had been ran over by a tractor trailer. And they they just they were so they were so scared. They was more scared of us of what we were going to say than they were of being hurt. And I mean and there was there was no pain, no injuries, no nothing. So God has truly kept us. It was not that bad. <laughs> Go sit down. They don't want to say that. Oh, that brother, they don't like each other. But, uh, 
And we're still talking about him going up north. She don't want him to go. But he did get ticket, uh, some invitations from fam U2, so. Uh -huh. Going down there. That's where his grandma man, so that's three hots and a cock. You might want to think about that. Um, any other, well, did we do the birthday at all? Come on, let's do this together. Come on, guys. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Amen. Any anniversary, any anniversary. For real? Any, anyone married in January? Oh, come on over here, January. Thick and thin, so I pray for her and tell I love her. Yeah. Yeah. Happy anniversary to you all. Amen. Well, in the Old Testament around this time, they harvest been pulled and the new year had began. Farmers were getting the seeds ready to begin to plant in the upcoming spring and the ground would be loosened. 
brought forth to prepare for the next harvest. This is the start of a new year. And I keep telling people that tithing and offering has nothing to do with money and it's not about giving. It's about value. How do we value cable bills and subscriptions to things we pay for monthly over what we say we would give back unto the Lord to show discipline and honor? It's growing time, guys. If you 38 still doing $2, you're wrong. I don't know what dollar amount you're supposed to do. If you don't know what dollar amount you're supposed to do, I will tell you this, you ought to be growing. Amen? Amen. Now the Bible does talk about the 10th. But to me, that's just a marking level of what I would grow up into. And I want you to think hard and long about what you want to give today and in the future. Because we give a lot of people, a lot of places, a lot of things, a lot of our time, our money, our effort, our love, our compassion. When we come home, we give them what's left. And that ain't cool. No wife wants to hear the last good, the last hello from her husband. She wants to hear the best hello come from on, her man. husband. No husband wants to hear I miss you from the last of his wife. He wants to hear it from the best of his wife. No children want to know that they're the last children thought about, but the first ones in your home. All about value. So if you wish to give today by electronic transformation, will you please step to the rear? The two gentlemen in the back will help you. If you want to give by debit card today? Amen. You may step to the rear. If you wish to give by cash or check, you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Our usher will bring you one.
in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this offering that we're about to receive, oh God. We thank you for those that gave, those that had the desire, Lord, to give but had not. Now, God, we ask that you take and bless, stretch, multiply this offering, oh God, that it be used for the uplifting of thy kingdom. God, these blessings and many more we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll now have our scripture by Deacon Johnny Croker. Amen. Amen. Hi, everybody. Amen. Welcome to the new year. Amen. Uh, the scripture will be coming from song. And, uh, I'm going to give you a song 24. No, sorry, correction. Song 34. Okay. Praise to the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> I will praise. <clears throat> I will praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. <clears throat> oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They that look unto him and was like me, and their faith was not a shame. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and said, Him out of all the trouble. The angels of the Lord encamp all around and about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the Lord that trust in him. I read the Psalm 34. Bless the readers and the door. Have a blessed day. Amen. 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 Well, my brothers and sisters, we don't have a lot of fun left. But now it's time for the Lord to talk directly to you. Talk about it, sir. I mean directly to you. Talk about it. So we ask that you get the crop park out your mind, the football game, and whatever it is that's blocking you right now. Because God has stationed a man here that's going to preach the word, the unadulterated word of God. So before he come, I need you to stretch your hands to where he was standing and say, Pastor Overseer Murray, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. Amen. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord today. Come on, put your hands together for the one that died for your sins. Rose on the third day with all power. Come on, look at you, Lord. It's a new year. It's a new year. Look at your neighbor. It's a new year. So what's new about it? Amen. Glory, glory.
you feel it? somebody close. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody lost somebody close? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Our associate pastor, Pastor Paul, lost his dad on Christmas. Christmas Eve morning. Came to church anyway. Came to New Year's Eve service. Came back to New Year's night service. Came to Bible study. Came out yesterday. Here today. Him and his wife have to fly to Chicago. And I'm sure they already paid for their tickets. But I love this man. If I didn't know any better, we grew up in the same house. How do I say that? Me and my wife don't worry about this church at all. You and your wife, y'all keep this thing running like a well. Now, I, I, I don't believe in co-pastoring because that ain't in the Bible. But I do believe that you should have leaders that can walk in your stead. He run this church. I manage it. I just oversee. Day to day, he handles it. The wife is available, they handle it. And I'm teaching every preacher and teacher that's around me. I'm teaching them how to pastor. 
Preaching is the word. Pastoring is the people. If you don't know how to deal with the people, they're not going to listen to your preaching. I want to bless them. I want to help them get whatever they want to do when they get up in Chicago. I don't want to worry about a meal. I don't have to worry about nothing. I want to be able to have something in his pocket because it's the righteous thing to do because he can do it for me every chance he gets. Those that can and will. Come. Come. strong it won't be long I want you to look at the book of Romans chapter 12 I, I tried to go other places but the Lord kept bringing me back to this if you can't find it stand for a moment as we read it the book of Romans chapter 12 the book of Romans chapter 12 the book of Romans chapter 12 if I give you another verse that means what if you need a Bible raise your hands and our mushers will bring you one the book of Romans chapter 12 have one in the back, please, ladies. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Amen. We got you, brother Tars. Okay. Amen. 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 The book of Romans, chapter 12. The book of Romans, chapter 12. Shall we stand for just a moment while we read this word together? Amen. The book of Romans chapter 12, starting with the first verse. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Our pilot text will just be coming from verse 2. He says, and be not conformed to this world, <laughs> but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may be seated. Mr. Parker, salute you doing a beautiful wife today. Thank God for you fellowship with us. We love you all. I'm happy to announce we're going to year 13. I've been blessed to know Mr. Parker and his wife for 13 years. <laughs> yeah. Fellowship with us since the time of our inception. I had some other titles and other scriptures I was looking at this week, but the Lord kept bringing me back to this one for, I believe, a positive reason. Throughout this week, I've noticed that there has been a great amount of turmoil over the social media and so many people of prestigious levels. Uh, so many folk are now being called out, put out, picked out, and brought forth to both believer and unbeliever. And I'm not here to get into the gist or the gossip of it all. I'm here to bring forth the gospel of saying that ain't nobody safe. Uh, there's nobody in this room, nobody under the sound of my voice that if your past is your past, God will dispose of it. But however, if your past is your present, he will expose it every time. And I want to encourage each and every one of us to know that we all got stuff. Yes, we do. 
Now, your stuff may not be at the magnitude of someone else's, but if you stop for a second, be honest with yourself, you all got stuff. So when I look at this particular text, this book of Romans, and he tells us here that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Every year about this time, Mother McCullough, we all come up with some kind of New Year's resolution. Keenan, I'm going to work out better. I'm going I'm to I'm eat right. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 do better. See, I'm going to fix my mouth, fix my attitude. I'm going to be more presentable. I ain't going to be mad this year. I, I'm not going to be depressed. This year, I'm, I'm going to do great things in the law yeah. this year. <laughs> but somewhere along the way there, T.T., we kind of find out that things don't work the way I want them to work. And Rod, Rod, get a little upset because things aren't going the way I want them to go. And before I know it, Brother Darrell, I slipped back to where I was. Yeah. Because I learned two songs and three scriptures, Sister Jackie. I can make sure I understand what I'm doing ain't that bad. <laughs> but oh, don't let me find out your business and what you got going on. I'm going to put you right in the pits of hell as soon as grits is grocery. I ain't going to do right by you. But I want to be done right by others. So when I looked at this, I said, Lord, what could you bring forth to manifest it to those who would learn something? And this is really going to be key because I won't be very long at all, so I need you to keep up. He says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If I had, I would encourage you today, look at your neighbor, if you will, and say, pastor's going to preach about resolution without restoration. Let that sink in for a moment. Making resolutions, yet I don't desire a restoration. How, how, how can I, as a believer of God, really get, to get past and get through the things of my life if I don't desire to be restored? The month of March, I really encourage you to come, really come, come, come to Bible study. I will be starting a series on the road less traveled forgiveness. I got to bring it back. I got to bring it back. I got to, I got to, because what I'm finding is, Brother Tower, is the reason that people cannot give is because they cannot forgive. Right. But well, they say, I, 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 I can forgive, but I can't forget. You ain't forget. Now, I'm not saying you can't recall information. I'm not saying you can't remember information. But if you still talk about what they did to you back then in the day, and it's still coming up all the time, then that tells me you have not forgiven them. Because I would know a God that would allow you to keep that on your mind, your heart, and your spirit on a regular basis. Have you right here taking pills that the doctor they're supposed to give you? Now, stop back if you can. Have you going to places you weren't supposed to go? Have you visiting God for Facilities you weren't supposed to be in. Have you wasted your time and your spirit on things that are not going to get you to the next level? And before you know it, as I said earlier in the leaders' meeting, just because it's a crisis don't mean you crazy. A crisis just means you need Christ. But if you're not careful, you hang with two or three not gathered in his name, they'll have you believe in something. I want to be restored in God. Yes. Now, yes, I understand. He said, I send you a comforter. That means, that doesn't mean it's going to be comfortable, Rick, but at the end of the day, I still ought to have some joy about getting up in the morning. Yes. I ought to feel good when I walk through the day and do yes. something good for God. I ought to understand that people ain't going to always agree with me and like me and talk to me. And that. But at the end of the day, if I believe I'm doing what God has told me to do, then I ought to be in a good place. Yes. A peace. Yeah. You see, it don't matter how much money you make. You don't buy no peace. I, 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 I was blessed at one time early in my career as a law enforcement officer. I was, I was, I was, I was 
able to sit at the home of an NBA player right here in the city of Orlando on a regular basis, 10 to 12 hours a day, and I watched how he would come out on, the, on his top balcony, big house, 8,000 square foot home. He had all this gated community. He had everything that he wanted. He cars and, 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 and FedEx would pull up with brand new shoes on a regular basis. He couldn't even wear. He'd give them away. He had all these beautiful things you could ask for, boats and cars and, 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 and four wheelers and, 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 and jet skis and all, all the stuff money could buy. And he would be out in the stoop at night rubbing his head. Because you can't buy peace. You can't buy patience. And many of us right now, we're running around, like Grandma said, chickens with our heads cut off, trying to do this and trying to do that, trying to please this person and trying to make sure this person is happy with us and trying to make sure this person is still calling us and texting us and TikToking us and Instagramming us and Facebooking us and whatever else new is coming out. We got all that going on and at night, we toss them and turn them like we got ants in our pants and we need to dance. We're struggling to get up in the morning, bro. Mike, just to get on clothes and step out the front door. We're walking around smiling, but we organize train wrecks. Talk back if you can. But the beautiful thing about the way the Bible is set up, that no matter what you have going on, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you put your mind, your body, your spirit, God said if you just come and understand that I am the answer to any situation and all that you go through, I will take care of you. So he says here, resolution without restoration. He said, and be not conformed to this world. First of all, first of all, we have to restore our trust. Now they say in God we trust. That's money. We got to trust God. I was saying this morning, bring me that chair, baby, right here. When y'all came in, how many of y'all went to sit down and said, <laughs> yeah, I think it's chair word. Right. How many? We all came, we sucked right in it. Didn't know if it had three legs, two legs, one leg, one work, one didn't work. But when it's time to get what God wants us to be, uh oh, I don't know, child. I, girl, I, man, I don't know. I don't know. I prayed about my child. I still don't feel like God gonna move on it. I don't know. I was gonna talk about girl, but you know what? Someone happened last weekend. Uh, man, I want to do something, but man, but see, you don't understand, Pastor, how this work. She mean, you know, and me and God got a side deal, and you know, all this doubt, all this worry, and all this sadness, all these things, problems, everything but a praise and a trust in God. How many of you got in the car so I hope it crank up? Mm. You didn't even think about it. Most of y'all got push button anyway. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all. Didn't even think about it. Anybody ever did a mercy swipe at the stove? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bud. <laughs> Let me help you with that. You don't know all you college graduates. That's when you take a card and you swipe it, and you're like, ooh. 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 Man, but Jesus let it go through, right? Some of y'all, you do your prayers that way. <laughs> you go into an ATM that's guaranteed to give you something. But you know you ain't putting nothing in it. So you hope it because it's sitting in the red, you get a little grace. Because they still charge you $35 if they let it go through. But the Lord we serve say, you know what, I'm still going to give it to him. I'm allow him to get what he want. I'm allow to get what she want. But to, because under the understanding that I am God, they're going to see that I'm God, hopefully. And I want to tell you something, guys. You got to stop putting your prayers out in a place where not realize that if it's up to me, I ought to know what I'm praying about. Amen. 
Yeah. I don't know what I'm praising about. I, I, I want to be conformed to this world. I got to trust God because the world is telling me I don't need God. Yeah. Dare I say it? Some say it ain't no God. It's an ultimate power in the universe. Mm. Wherever that at. <laughs> and we got to start getting serious. Resolution without restoration. How can you move forward if you don't even come to Bible study? Amen. How are you talking about the presence of God, the power of God, the promises of God, when you really don't know them? All you have, guys, is experiences, but no exposure. Because whatever you're exposed to, fall on you. You don't believe me? Ask them, brother. You ain't got to be the one smoking it. Just be in the car. Am I, am I, can I be realistic? Y'all like y'all never heard about it. It's called contact. So if you have a contact with God, and I come over and tell this man about the goodness of God, it might be second hand, but it's first down in his, in his heart. That he believes that what I'm telling him is the gospel. And he believes he has a purpose and a promise to fulfill. We got to start getting people up to a nature of knowing you don't have to just exist in the world. You don't have to just survive in the world. You can thrive in this world. Even when you ain't got what you want, you show sure enough you get what you need. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. We must restore our trust. And the world is conformed not to trust God. The Bible kept showing preachers over and over and over. In with God, out with God. In with God, out with God. Y'all ain't doing nothing new. It's been in the Bible for years. The key is, though, without conviction, there is no conversion. If what you do don't bother you, Ain't nothing I can say to you. Right. If you don't believe you're wrong in what you're doing, this ain't everything for you. Right. You have to have a personal conviction of saying I want to be greater in God. Not just because it's coming to me, but because I got people, places, and things that I'm going to be touching and agreeing with and talking with and relating with. And I want them to see more of God than they see of me. Because when they see God, they see miracles. When they see me, they see mistakes. So I need them to see God in me. That they get past my mistakes and recognize that I am a miracle in God. Do I got any blood box believers that say, I've done some stuff I shouldn't have done, said some stuff I shouldn't have said, but I don't thank God that He came into my life, brought me up to a new place, and now I'm a miracle walking and talking and says, He is the Lord, there is no other. Because I won't. So he says, but be ye transformed. Here's where we fall short. We're so stuck on what's right and what's wrong, we miss what's righteous. Because you can be right and still not be righteous. That's why the Bible tells you to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Because you begin to understand that there are some things God just wants you to see that's going to help somebody here. And some things he wants you to do something about. But only through discernment will you know the difference between the two. Some things you're going through, God don't want you to say nothing about it. He wants you to tell nobody. He wants you to... All right. And then there's something God said, I need you to go over and see me. I want you to open your heart. Let him pray with you. Go see mother. Talk to her. I keep saying this. I'm going to keep saying this every week. Ladies, no offense. There's too much wisdom in this room. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. For y'all to be struggling. Amen. Too much. For you not to understand what a man really wants. I know what you think they want. 
but you only get part of what you think they want. Mm. Brothers, there's too many men in this room. Too much wisdom. As a man to keep failing. How you around successful people are you not successful? That ain't possible. Unless you ain't taking nothing in. How can you ask of your children what you won't even do? You tell them to pick their friends, but they see all yours. What? Talk about it, Reverend. What? <laughs> 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 Talk back if you can. My buddy Trent, so once again, yep, you know, resolution without restoration. First, restore our trust. Now he says we have to restore our training. Mm -hmm. The only way to transform is to be trained into thinking differently. Y'all confuse that with people trying to take over your life. Well, let me help you with something. My grandfather told me I was a young boy. He said, son, whenever you put your life in another man's hands, don't be mad how he treats you. If you ain't got enough gumption, y'all lose Google that gumption. Mm. <laughs> to start fending for yourself and start realizing that it is your job to build a relationship with Christ that will keep you convicted in your conversion. That when you step out into the real world, there ain't nothing they can put on you unless you get them, allow them to have it. See, the, the enemy doesn't have power. He has presence. Yes. You give him power. Right. Wherever God's presence is, there stands his power. Yeah. But it is only released when asked for. Yeah. Right. What do you really ask for God? He says, but be ye transformed. I used to watch that when I was a little boy. Transformers. Transformers. Oh, that's in this guy. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Okay. Y'all is supposed to the holiest people. I grew up, look, I grew up Church of God in Christ. I knew what we couldn't watch. It was the devil. But what I, what I began to learn about this this particular show was that they were camouflaging themselves to work within the world while they had the agenda that they had. What am I saying? Sometimes you got to work with people that you know don't. But you're transforming from within that it comes out. And so as you transform, you should be training your mind and your body and your spirit to know that you mean something, that you're valued, that you're necessary, and that you need it. Quit looking for the world to give you gratification. It cannot. It will not. There's too much greed in the world. Every preacher wants all the members. Every first Sunday, I believe this meeting. And you know why I try to tell them without telling them? Without telling them? If 100 people showed up today, are we ready to deal with it? Quit getting comfortable in your lifestyle. You should, God should be pouring into you on a regular basis. The problem is, he will not pour new wine into old wine skin. This is a new year. You still got last year. Get rid of your Tupperware. It's old. Get rid of it. I'm serious. My wife said, I, I go around, I look at stuff out the box. Uh-uh. It got to go. It don't even look like I want to put food in it. Right. Chuck it! Yeah. Go back to Dollar Tree get another one. Talk back if you can. It's the same thing in life. If it don't belong, it's got to go. Whatever's keeping me angry and upset at night, it's got to go. Whatever's got me crying for no reason, it's got to go. 
Well, you got me when I'm too, 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 too scared to speak up about what God is. It's got to go. Anybody getting restored this morning? Wave your hand if you are. Then he says, but be ye transformed. Now he's talking about restoring your training. He said, by the renewing of your mind. Of your heart? Mind. Why is it saying mind? I'm glad you asked. This is going to take you. Check this out. The decisions you make with your heart are based on the situation. But the decisions you make with your mind keep you making those situational things relevant. What am I saying? Some of us can't move forward because we keep bringing it back up. Child, I'm done with him. Why do you keep talking about him? I didn't come to Golden Career. I'm talking about him. I'm, I'm not wasting this iced coffee on, on talking about her, her again. I'm done with it, dog. Then why we keep talking about her? Oh, she's out of my phone now. You ain't changed your number yet? Is she Facebook with you? You ain't blocked her yet? Stop the lies. You don't want to be restored. You like the drama. Admit it. And I said, you don't understand. You're right. And I'm not going to try. Because I just love that man. I don't care what you say. I just love that man because he treats me the way that I want to be treated when I need to be needed. Restore our treatment. That's what this is saying now. By the renewing of your mind. We talk about another resolution without restoration. Restore our trust. Restore our training. Now we talk about restore our treatment. How you treat your mind, guys, is important. What are you really doing at 1 o'clock? In the morning? What are you really watching? That your kids should be watching. Talk about you if you can. <laughs> what controls you that you can't move forward in God? Because if God has got you up that time of morning, He's trying to talk to you. I guarantee you. He's trying to get your attention. There's something He wants to share with you. So it's okay to say, Lord, speak to me. And he got the power to speak to you and put you back to sleep. That's the treatment we should be having. Guys, the reason people abuse us is because can't nobody abuse us like us. We abuse ourselves so bad that when other people do it, we don't even notice it. That's why I keep going over and seeing I know he crazy. <laughs> but crazy all I got right now. <laughs> See how I rationalize that? That's real. I know she don't want me, but hey. That's all I got right now. Thank you. Amen, bro. <laughs> the times are winding down. Yes. People are scared. Folk don't know what to do now. And the church, we're not setting a platform for people to come and get what they need to go back out into the world. We tell everybody they're gonna be a millionaire. She can't handle two hundred dollars. Why would God give her a millionaire? Why are we lying to people? Why would God set you up like that? To work with people, and you don't like people. Oh, that's true. That's true. Why would he do that? That's not an organized God. And you got to ask yourself, God, what more me do I need to do that you can use me righteously this time? Because I'm tired. 
I'm just working it through, hanging out in church and hoping it work out when I go home mm -mm. Wow. on Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like I'm necessary. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are part of this ministry and you're not connected, that ain't my fault. Exactly. Come on, Reverend. Exactly. And if I don't call you out on it, that is my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to get it off me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you today, yeah. if you're a part of this ministry and not connected, yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. I ain't coming back. Well, <laughs> and the Lord told you, do what he did. <laughs> then he goes at the end. He said that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect with God. Doc, now this is what I love about this. Yep. <laughs> this is not. This last part of the scripture, you won't understand if you did not renew your mind. Mm -hmm. right. If you did not transform and you did not move out of conformity. Mm -hmm. The last part you won't even get, preacher. Mm -hmm. Are y'all catching this? Mm -hmm. You cannot say that you might prove what is good and acceptable if you don't have the mindset for that. Mm -hmm. So there are levels you got to reach before you can even start understanding the finality of this scripture. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to see. Y'all read this thing like a comic book and not really understand how this, how this how this scripture evolves itself while you've been reading it. The word of God is past, present, and future all at the same time, guys. That's why you got to be careful how you read it. You don't read it literally. You read it from a spiritual mindset and you self-evaluate, not evaluate, self-evaluate while you read it. That's why you say he's talking to me. If you don't, you think he's talking about the guy next to you. Which is the problem that the disciples had. The more they hung with Jesus, the more he teached and preached, the less they thought he was talking to them. And they got lackadaisical and complacent. And when he really needed them, they fell asleep. <laughs> not once, not twice, but three times. Quit coming to church to sleep. Stay home. Wow. I don't mean no disrespect. You should come here with some recording material to write down God ought to be speaking to you while the word is being preached and teached. So you can go back out here and help other people. Gone are the days, guys, of just working through life. You are all ministers of the gospel. You ain't got to have no collar on. That means you have the ability to be profound in who God is by your lifestyle. Yeah. That your life match your lips. And people say it's just somebody. I don't know what it is. I'm done with that today. I want to make an opportunity to offer to anybody today. That maybe you just heard. I've been making resolutions and I'm not even restored. I need to be restored in God. Because then when I become confident in God, I can even come complete in God. If you're a person that wants to give your life to Christ and the pardon of your sins, while there's still time, you still can remember how to say and do, come. This is not about oppressing people. But it is about people seeing that you're human and that you're hurting and that you're tired and that you won't help. See, the enemy will tell you you don't need no help. Ain't that wrong with you, it's the world. But in reality, it is some things you have to get straight. There's some places he wants to take you, but he won't let you get there. See, we're so crazy about getting to a destination. That's not what God is trying to tell you. It's not where you're going. It's how you are when you get there. What good is it for you to get there and you're full of doubt? I can't use you. What good is it for you to get there and you're depressed? I can't use you. I need your hunger for him. Maybe say, you know what? I, if I know the Lord for myself, but I don't have a church home. I need a place of accountability. I want to come. Why this time? Why God will still use me. I want to be a part of a house. And I want to help. Maybe say, you know what? I just need to hear from God today. I want to be restored today. And I'm honest. And I'm true. 
Won't you come? You may be asking, why do you use an oil? One of the things done in the Old Testament is they prepared the soldiers for battle. They were anointed. This was a sign of trust of the soldier to the cause and the cause to the soldier. Who do you trust? What's your cause? What do you need to get you to the next level? Why there's still time. And it won't stop spinning, guys. Problems are going to continue to arise. But they're only meant to keep you closer to Him. Those are candy wheels. Just raise your hand for a second. Those here that come for the word, just. Father God, I know right now these people. They're hurting in so many different areas of their life. They're confused. They're not sure. They're not confident. But God, I believe you're going to do something great over their lives. They just got to start believing that they matter in this world. And despite anything that they have done, whatever mistake they have made, you have the power to turn into a miracle and make them a miracle worker. Show them, God, that they're necessary. Show them that they're needed. Show them that if they just trust you, all can and will be resolved. Yet, God, also remind them that in order to gain everything, you're going to have to lose it all. Some people, some places, some things, you're going to have to let it go. Some areas of your life are going to have to be dealt with, called out, and brought forth before the altar. And most of all, they got to forgive themselves. And they got to forgive those who hurt them and not leave them with that power over them that they cannot prosper and progress. Do your work, you will. Your way. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you today. And we feel stronger about ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Put your hands together for the Lord today. communion this morning. Let me, let me help you with something. Um, sometimes when you come in the first of the year, people can sometimes be confusing. In the Bible, it talks about communion. It tells you you need to evaluate yourself before you take it. And so some people believe that that means I can't take it because I've done something or said something. When it says evaluate, it means have you repented? You shouldn't take communion if you're not going to repent. But if you do have a heart to repent, then that qualifies you. Are y'all hearing me? I like to teach people stuff. Because sometimes we get traditionally lost in things. Your repentance is the only gateway to God. Without conviction, there is no conversion. 
You can do everything, feed the homeless, go across and make sure people got what they need and say all the nice things. But if you do not come forth to the Lord and tell him, look, I have some things that are wrong with me, God. And I want to get it right. That opens up the avenue. The Bible says here, he washes it wider. So as we prepare for communion, take your personal time and repent. You don't have to come up here to me and do it. Now, why do I encourage people to come up? Because it gives other people the knowledge of knowing everybody's human. I tell my preachers, how you come all year long and don't come up here? Somebody better come. I come up here. Because I don't always get it right. But I believe that if I stay convicted about what I do, give God the glory and the honor, he'll take care of me. So as we prepare for communion this morning, Dickens it will come. Well, this is what we The blood that Jesus shed for me. Wait. says that the Lord asked the disciples to go to the upper room and prepare a supper not knowing it would be the last time that they would dine with him in the physical body he had come in this earth with but when he returned he came in a new body the Bible says he took the bread he prayed and he broke it I'm going to ask if Deacon Smith will pray over the bread and the cup that gives me strength Heavenly Father, we pray over this communion supper that has been prepared for us. Not by human hands, but by your sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross, for the remission of sin, for all who have lived and all who will ever live. We praise your holy name. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. We will start from the far right of my side of the section. We'll get up, come around.
Is there anyone who had not had the chance to take come? The bread, the representation of the broken body on Calvary's cross, take ye all of it. Representation of the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. There had to be no shedding of blood, there would be no remission of our very sins. Take ye, drink all of it. Amen. We would like to thank you all for being with us today. As Jesus left the garden and out to the cruel world, we now leave you with the same. There will be no closing prayer today. So, fellowship. I love somebody before you leave today. We thank you for visiting us, Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church, myself, First Lady Tamika Murray, and the Mount Zion Tabernacle family. God bless you, God give you. Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church, where all you need is a touch from here. God bless you.